What's going on YouTube? So Toyota shook up the full-size truck segment with the introduction of the all-new Tundra last year. The new Tundra is offered in a wide variety of trims to meet the needs of a wide variety of people, including luxury-minded people with this capstone. We've spent the last week testing out this ultimate Tundra, so let's go ahead and see if this is the truck for you. So the best place to start off this review will be the exterior design because this is one of my favorite things about the next generation Tundra. It just really has a very handsome look to it. It also has kind of this boxy, rugged vibe as well, even if you choose the capstone, which of course is the fanciest of the bunch. So let's talk a little bit about what that capstone is going to give you here in the front. The grille itself is going to be different. So every trim level basically does have a different grille. This one here is gonna be focused more on kind of having elaborate details. So you have thin chrome bars that run through it. And then you've got this black mesh that zigzags through here, giving it, like I said, a little bit of a fancier look. Your Toyota emblem is traced in blue because this has a standard iForce Max hybrid powertrain, which we'll talk about, of course, a little later. And then you've got the big Tundra branding right through there. But let's go ahead and talk about the lighting next. So as you can tell, we do have very premium looking lighting on board. Full LED, of course. These are going to be projector LEDs uh, with the four crystal design. We also have the premium arrangement, which includes the nice looking sequential LED turn signal indicator, as well as our daytime running light through there. And then most of the Tundra lineup is going to come with the LED fog lights built into the grill. So if you like big wheels, Capstone is going to be the trim for you because this has the exclusive 22 inch alloy wheels. This is the only trim level that comes with 22 inch alloys. It's the largest wheel ever offered on a Tundra. And as you can see, they do have a very elaborate finish. It's going to definitely scream luxury because we've got a lot of spokes, a lot of color accents running in and out through here. Um, and like I said, it definitely plays into the vibe of luxury truck. As we move on from that, you've got your iForce Max branding. Mason's showing you right now. You also have capstone branding down here on the lower part of the door. And then keeping with the chrome trim theme, we have chrome trim on our mirror caps for the top part at least, gloss black on the lower part. You can also get towing mirrors if you uh, need a larger mirror. And then as far as the technology, we've got all of them on board. So you have heating, power folding, auto dimming on the driver's side, as well as the blind spot monitoring system built in. All right guys, so let's talk about the side of this capstone Tundra. Now for 2023, you're not gonna see any side design changes, um, but I do wanna talk about how you can get the capstone Tundra. They do make my job relatively easy because it is just gonna be the five and a half foot short bed with the crew cab configuration. So that's the only way that you can get a capstone model is that specific combination. Now, of course, they do offer tons of different cab and bed configurations depending on your needs, uh, but they are on different trim levels. So do keep that in mind. Now, as far as some of the other design elements, we do have this chrome piece going through the middle here. We also have chrome outdoor handles. And then let's walk around to the rear design. And I do apologize for the noise here. We normally film in a very peaceful location and today it's turned into a construction site as well as lawn mowing. So that's unfortunate, but what can you do? When you get out the camera, they always bring out the noise. Now, as far as the rear design of the Tundra, uh, for 2023, no exterior significant changes here. So we're gonna have... <laughs> you can't make this up. So you have Tundra stamped into the tailgate. All of the other versions of the Tundra are just gonna have the stamping but if you go for the capstone, you're gonna have this nice chrome finish for the Tundra branding, which looks really nice. We also have chrome for our tailgate release right here. And if we drop down to the lower areas, you will notice that we're gonna have some more chrome finish right here, as well as some of the body color going all the way down. It's in a very squared off design, like what you see in the front. And then let's look at some of our lighting. So the lighting is 
probably my favorite aspect of the rear design because these are very premium LED taillights. They're included if you go for a platinum trim level or above, and they're gonna have these sequential LED turn signals, and they're gonna be full LED. You're also gonna have LED reverse lights integrated into the bumper here. And then if you're curious about the tow rating, we're looking at 10,340 pounds for the capstone since it's only available in one engine configuration. Um, so that's gonna be your tow rating, which is pretty impressive. It's a big improvement over the previous generation Tundra. Now, before we go on to mention the bed information, I wanna point out this right here. We do have an exposed exhaust outlet here on the right side for the capstone. It's gonna be nice and chrome tipped. Now, one other thing I wanna point out too that this particular tester has is the auto leveling rear air suspension. Uh, that is an option on air, pretty much all the trim levels of the Tundra lineup. And we do actually have that on this particular model, which is of course useful for if you're hauling stuff in the bed. Now. Let's go ahead and check out the bed itself. So you can lower it via the key fob. You can also just push this button here. But the cooler way of doing it is this right here. We have the elbow release integrated into the tail light here. So hands full, if you need to get into the tailgate, you just bump into it. Looky there, tailgate fully releases down. And inside of here, you're gonna have, uh, this of course, like I said, is the five and a half foot bed. And you're gonna have a really nice, uh, bed area. So you have a nice liner here. We also have LED illumination up here in the top as well as on the side since we do have that fully loaded capstone model. Over here on the right side you will notice that we do have a household style outlet so you can plug in whatever you're going to need for your tailgating. And then we're not done yet because this is another capstone exclusive feature is that we have the power release for this um, foot hold. So you can just step into the bed just like that and it does just release with the tailgate which is really nice uh, the other tundras will give you a similar feature but it's not going to have the power ability unless you go for the capstone model all right so let's go ahead and discuss our warranty and safety systems for this tundra capstone now as far as the safety systems are concerned toyota is throwing in their safety sense 2.5 system standard across every trim level of the Tundra, which is especially nice for the more basic Tundra versions because you don't have to go for the highest end models to get all the features. That said, for the capstone, you are gonna have all those features, which will include forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane keeping assist, auto high beams, as well as adaptive cruise control, plus a few extra goodies thrown in for the 2.5 system. Now, as far as your warranty is concerned, you're gonna have Toyota Signature Warranty, three year, 36,000 mile basic warranty, five year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty, the battery for this uh, hybrid model is gonna have a 10 year, 150,000 mile warranty for itself specifically. And you're also gonna have two years and 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up the exterior design of this Tundra Capstone. This of course is a beautiful truck on the outside. Now let's go ahead and check out the really luxurious cabin before we take it out in a spin. Here's the smart entry system. I'm gonna go ahead and climb inside real fast because there's some construction noise out here. Now we do have the power running boards. As you can see, those are standard on the capstone, available on 1794 and platinum grades. Really nice, uh, good and fast, they're quiet. And we do also have the leather covered assist grip here with the capstone. But let's look around this beautiful cabin because of course we have the highest model in the Tundra lineup, the Pinnacle, the Capstone. And one of the biggest things about the Capstone is gonna be what you're looking at right now. That is the seats. So these are special to just this model because these are finished in exclusive semi-anilin leather. So that of course is some of the nicest leather in the auto industry. Um, shared with a lot of Lexus products, and indeed it does feel very soft and supple. I really love these seats. They're absolutely beautiful. This is also a special color combination. This is the only way you can get the capstone, so it's gonna be basically black on the bottom, light colored, uh, whitish color here on the top, and that same, same color combination is gonna continue all throughout the rest of the cabin as well. Now, turning over here to the seat controls, we do have a 12-way power adjusting seat here on the capstone model, including a power thigh extension. 
You will also find a memory seating located right there. That's gonna be on all three of the top trim levels. And let's start looking around this cabin as a whole because like I said, it is very nicely finished as you'd expect for the top model. So you're gonna notice the same white leather over here on the door trim for the armrest. It is gonna continue up through here with the stitching detail. And I do also like that Toyota has made this nice and flat and also leather covered here on this model so you can rest your arm up here like a lot of truck drivers like to do. We do also have four fully automatic windows. Continuing up the dashboard, we've got a leather covered upper dashboard through there. Although the uh, extreme upper parts, including this portion right here is gonna be hard touch. Down below, we have the beautiful open pour American walnut wood trim here on the capstone model. And this part here does also illuminate at night and says capstone. That's in addition to the other ambient lighting, which you see underneath of here and on the door trims at night, which looks very nice. We do have a nice leather covered center part of the dashboard, again with lots of nice stitching details. More of that American walnut wood trim through there, more leather along the console, and everything does fit together very nicely. Now to start it up, put your phone on the brake and press the blue button. Now, of course, one of the big things about this next generation Tundra is that certain versions, including the Capstone, are hybrid. And as such, you don't necessarily have the engine on, which we don't right now. Now, let's talk about the gauges. What you're looking at is a really nice looking 12.3 inch full digital gauge cluster. Uh, this is included on, of course, your top trims, as you would expect. Graphics are really nice and vivid. You can scroll through your traditional information over here on the left side, including your safety systems. Uh, we do have our hybrid and iForce Max um, gauges there, which tell you certain things about the information. And then if you uh, change the drive modes, the design does also change as well. Now, in addition to that, with the Capstone, this is the only model in the lineup that's gonna have the head-up display as standard equipment. This is a really nice head-up display. It's very large, very vivid, and has a lot of useful information on it. Now pulling back here to the steering wheel, we do have the newest Toyota design, really nice looking um, wheel, perforated leather here on the sides, um, and we do have the stitching detail on the airbag cover as well. As far as the wheel itself, it is going to be power, tilt, and telescoping, and of course heated as well here on the capstone model. But bougie truck or not, you still have to have plenty of storage to get work done and haul around the family. I am happy to report the Tundra nails this aspect. So we'll start out underneath here with our little storage cubby underneath the wood for small items. We have a little tray right here. This actually slides below that to give you quick access to the center console so you can quickly grab out things like your sunglasses or you can open up the entire slot itself and see the storage area as a whole. Pretty nicely sized. Some of the rivals are a bit larger in this regard, um, but it's very versatile with cubbies and you also have your USB ports inside. But let's put it to the test. Brought our Car Confections coupon bag. This is our bag. It's for sale um, with our merch line to contain our coupons inside. So I'll grab these out and put it to the test. Boom, passes. All right, now up in front of that, you've got your two cup holders. You have another large storage area right there, which is also a wireless phone charging pad on the upper end trim levels. Now pulling back here to the shifter, a lot of you guys will be very happy to see. Traditional style shifter, has a nice meaty feel in the hand, no push buttons or anything like that. You can shift manually over here, like so. And when you go into reverse, you are gonna be greeted with a 360 degree camera system, as you would expect on the fully loaded Tundra. We do have active trajectory here. We've got the uh, trailer lining up line there, uh, front and rear parking sensors, overhead view, and you also have the perimeter scan function as well. 
then up in front of the shifter, you got your electronic parking brake as well as your brake hold function. And then on the capstone model, you will also have the trailer backup assist system as standard equipment, as well as our trailer brake controller. And then back behind the shifter, you do have your four wheel drive controls and here's your drive mode controller, as well as the button to activate your tow haul mode. But let's rise on up here to our climate controls. So as you'd expect, the majority of the models are gonna come with a dual zone automatic climate control. Um, including this top end model. Very simple to use. Toyota gives you nice, large, physical buttons so you can use these with gloves, whatever. Um, I'm glad they thought about stuff like that. You also have a USB port kind of integrated into this area. And over here we do also have our three-stage heated seats as well as three-stage ventilated seats. Next to that, we have a large volume knob as well. So you're gonna have six and nine speaker sound systems on your lower end trim levels. However, once you hit the platinum trim level, that's where you're gonna be upgraded to the 12 speaker JBL premium audio system. That's what we have and we'll go ahead and give it a sample right now. sound quality of this system is decent. Um, some of the rivals definitely offer better sounding sound systems, so I kind of wish the Capstone model had a little bit further upgraded sound system versus the Platinum in 1794. Um, nevertheless, I do want to point out though that uh, the speaker grills down here, um, they look like they're metal, but these are actually plastic. Um, and the problem that we had with this primarily was the fact that when you turn it up, I don't, you probably can't hear it on camera, but when you turn it up, uh, both of the door trims, somewhere in there, maybe the speaker grills, I'm not sure, something in there is rattling in both of the door trims. So uh, I do wish that they would fix that and um, hopefully that's just specific to today's example. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and talk about one area where we do not have any objections, and that is the infotainment system. So this is Toyota's brand new infotainment software, which you've probably seen in our past Tundra reviews as well as some of the other models, and uh, humongous improvement over the outgoing uh, Intune system. So what you're looking at here is a 14-inch display. Lower trim levels do come with an 8-inch display instead. But this display here is absolutely beautiful. It is huge, very high resolution. It looks fantastic, particularly when it's running the wireless Android Auto or the wireless Apple CarPlay system, which we are running right now. So as you can see, you've got the satellite maps that just look super crisp. Overall performance is fantastic. The Hey Toyota Assistant also works quite well. Now moving on up here to our mirrors, of course we do have the auto dimming mirror with Homelink Universal Remote, but if you flip that switch, the top three trim levels get the rear camera mirror system, so it cuts out all those rear obstructions you might have. Along the top, we've got a sunglass holder, LED lighting, and once again on the top three trim levels, you will have this large panoramic sunroof. As you can see, this really occupies almost the entire roof, way back there to the rear headrest, and the front panel does open up. Well guys, here we are in the Capstone Tundra's rear seat, and my oh my, there is a lot of space and also a ton of luxury features. So let's go ahead and dive into the space first, and then I'll hop into some of the luxury features that you're gonna get. Now, as far as the space is concerned, we're looking at 41.6 inches of legroom, 38 and a half inches of headroom here in the rear. Uh, that is, of course, for the Crew Max model. This capstone is only available in the Crew Cab configuration, so that's something worth noting. Now, as far as how that compares to the competition, that is actually less than F-150 and also less than Ram 1500. But guys, look, I'm five foot nine. This is Drew's seating position. We have at least a foot, if not a foot and a half, of space between my knees and the seat back and my feet can also slide up underneath the seat so you have zero issues in terms of space unless you're like Shaquille O'Neal 
you will be perfectly fine back here. Now, I also want to mention some of the features, so let's go ahead and hop into that. So we have a nice leather-wrapped armrest or center console here around your cup holders. They're going to be nicely integrated there. And then if we drop down below that, you'll notice these four controls right here. These are going to be for your heated as well as ventilated second row seats. Yes, you heard me right. In this new Tundra, we do have ventilated rear seats. And that's actually going to be included on the Platinum 1794 or Capstone Tundra models. Now off to the side of that, we do have vents, which is a nice touch. Not, no climate controls though, so you're going to have the, just the standard two-zone setup. Then if we drop below that, we have a USB type A as well as a USB type C port. And then we also have a household style connection to charge up anything you're gonna need. Now, if we fold down the center armrest, you will notice we have two more cup holders inside of here. So you can have four drinks in the rear if you need that. And then I am not done yet because if you turn to your door trim, we do have a really nice one. We have leather wrapping on all of the armrest portion as well as above it. And then we even have leather wrapping on the upper part plus Rear window sunshades. Uh, that's going to be included on 1794 Platinum and Capstone Tundra. So those top three trim levels are going to get those features. And we do even have a nice uh, bottle storage down in the bottom. Some wood trim, some fake metal speaker grills, and even nice touches like the leather assist grab back here in the rear. So this Capstone is really next level when it comes to luxury amenities. And this is a truck after all. So let's talk about some of those practicality elements going on here. So as far as the rear seat, you can fold it up just like you would in any pickup truck. That said, since this is the fully loaded model with the hybrid powertrain, all of this is actually going to be your battery for that hybrid powertrain. So you're not going to have any under seat storage, which is something worth noting. If you really need that under seat storage, you will have to go for a lower end trim level with the regular gasoline engine. You can still fold the seat back though down like that and then that gives you a little bit of additional space back here to put a few little things that you need to store and as far as your passenger seat is concerned we do have a nice uh, passenger seat it's going to be i believe this is 12-way power adjusting we do even have four-way lumbar support as well here on the passenger side so a very comfortable passenger seat then let's pop open that glove box in front of us inside of here this is actually not going to be felt lined that said, it is going to be a decent size. We have a ton of different things in here, a bunch of owner's manuals, window stickers, and all that stuff. Um, but it is definitely enough to fit some of our coupons in there. So we'll go ahead and get out our car confections tote with our coupons in here. And as you can see, it just slides in there perfectly fine. So you definitely will be able to save some money. And then up top, we do have a sun visor. We have some LED lighting as well as a mirror. It's a very large sun visor, I will point out, and you can also detach it and extend it out. There is 60 miles an hour in the 2023 Toyota Tundra. Now, this is not just any Toyota Tundra, as you've seen throughout this entire review, this is the fully loaded Capstone model. And one of the really good things about the Capstone trim level is that it's going to include the top end Tundra powertrain as standard equipment. That's going to be the hybrid powertrain that we were discussing earlier in the video with all the blue Toyota badging and stuff like that. And you might be thinking, oh my, a hybrid pickup truck, is that <laughs> going to be any good, Mason? Well, it definitely is. This is going to be the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 plus the hybrid componentry. We're going to be looking at 437 horsepower, 583 pound feet of torque. So, uh, this is not a hybrid in the traditional sense of a Prius in terms of fuel economy. It's not really all that fuel economy, economy minded. That said, you know, we do get better fuel economy. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but it's really more about having that additional power and having that really impressive, nearly 600 pound feet of torque figure. Um, this Tundra scoots. It's a big truck and it goes pretty quickly. Yeah, like, like Mason was saying, it's not related really in any way to that traditional hybrid system you may have experienced in other uh, Toyota products. But that being said, for instance, like right yep. now, the engine's been off for a few seconds um, as we kind of coasted down that hill. So you are saving fuel, and then you can, you know, punch it. <laughs> and you've got power 
power galore. So much power. And really, one of the things I want to point out is that, yes, this is a V6, um, and some of you guys might be coming from the previous Tundra that had a big V8 under the hood. Um, yes, the V8s do sound really good. That said, this V6 sounds pretty darn good as well. I mean, it sounds meaty. Yeah. Um, it doesn't sure. sound wimpy or anything. I mean, it just sounds really, really They're nice. They're definitely synthesizing it. Yeah. But, I mean, that does not matter to me at all. I do like that yeah. it sounds burly. Very similar to a V8. And when I accelerate here, I do want you to pay attention to when the engine kicks back on. There it goes. And I said I want you to pay attention is because it's really so seamless. You can hardly feel it at all, which is something that... Toyota hybrids have done for the last like 10 years. They've just done a fantastic job of having really good handoff between gas motor and just being turned off. Um, this is no exception. It's really, really impressive. And like Drew said, pretty much I've noticed throughout the course of the week, whenever you start going down a hill or, or light on the throttle, it's gonna go ahead and power that engine off. So it's it turns on and off quite a bit, but you really won't notice it at all. Yeah, uh, really Toyota's expertise comes into play here Yeah, uh, because this smoothness is absolutely fantastic and there it goes off. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And as far as, you know, direct competition, there is the Power Boost F-150, but I don't think that it was nearly as seamless. So it seems like we'll get a good sound level reading here as we go 55. after we get across the ridge here going 55 miles an hour. That's impressive. 52.3 decibels. 52, wow. That's an incredible reading. I'm sure having to do with the fact that the engine's not running during this yep. part of that test there. Um, but wow, that is a really good number. And I'm not surprised because it sounds incredibly quiet in here as we're going down the road. Um, the capstone is the one that has the um, in, um, acoustic glass, so that's going to help it versus the other trim levels, and uh, you know, it is pretty Lexus-like in here as far as the sound is concerned. Yeah, and not just talking about the sound, let's go ahead and talk about some of the ride quality elements. Um, like I mentioned in the outside of this video, hopefully you could have heard me, there was so much noise out there, I don't know if you'll even be able to hear me, but um, there is a rear air suspension on this model. That's mainly for the capability side of things. That said, it is really good in terms of your on-road driving dynamics. Um, we're in comfort mode, and definitely in comfort mode, it feels a lot nicer. It adjusts the adaptive dampers to really get you the best ride quality. Um, some of the other modes are a little bit rougher, but um, really good ride quality. It's not as good as a Ram 1500, I will say that, with the full air suspension. It's definitely not as good as that. Mm -hmm. And on the country roads, it can be a little bit harsh when you hit a bump in the road. On just cruising down the highway though, this is a really, really comfortable riding truck. So the fuel economy rating is 19 city, 22 highway, 20 combined. And I don't know exactly where that uh, is inside of those displays, but we'll insert a picture of what type of real world fuel economy we got throughout the course of the week, um, doing some highway driving as well as in the city. We went ahead and cycled into sport mode. <laughs> well, <laughs> sport mode in a big pickup truck like this kind of sounds stupid. That said, it definitely does uh, affect the throttle input. I was not even pressed all the way down and it really, it's just like lurching, ready to go. Um, it really taps into that full 583 pound-feet of torque when you're in sport. Uh, I think we're even in sport plus mode, I think is what we're in right now. Um, now, I haven't mentioned it up until this point, and honestly, that's kind of intentionally the transmission. It's gonna be a 10-speed automatic transmission, and the reason I didn't mention it until now is because it just blends so much into the background. It's a very seamless transmission. Uh, Toyota has done a great job with this uh, transmission. I have really no other comment than they've done a really great job and we've enjoyed having it for the last week. 
All right, guys, and let's go ahead and hop into our slam dunk and air ball for this Tundra Capstone model. Now, I'll kick us off with the slam dunk and just say the overall luxury factor on this capstone is very impressive, I will admit. Um, I honestly didn't think Toyota could rival some of the luxury that you see in like Ram 1500 and Ford F-150 Platinum and limited trim levels. I mean, those are just exceptionally luxurious trucks and Toyota really has knocked it out of the park with this all new model. They've made it very luxurious. Um, this is one of the top offerings in the entire segment in terms of luxury. And for today's air ball, I don't want to reiterate, but I will say that the fuel economy of this is less than its biggest rival, the Power Boost F-150. And before we conclude here, let me tell you what the price tag of today's capstone is. Like we said, it does have the standard um, iForce Max. Uh, we've got the optional low leveling suspension and adaptive uh, dampers, along with the special paint color and a $16.95 destination for a total of $76,760, which of course is rather expensive, but not uncharacteristic for this segment. Actually, probably even a little less than most of the competition. Yeah, so what do we think overall about this Tundra Capstone? Well, we sampled it out uh, briefly back in January of this year, and we were very impressed with it then. And after living with it for the last seven days, I have to say I continue to be very impressed at what Toyota has put together with this all-new Tundra in general. Well, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to this in-depth review of the 2023 Toyota Tundra Capstone. We, of course, have enjoyed living with this truck for the last seven days. So if you enjoyed watching this video or found some of our insights helpful, please pay us back by hitting that subscribe button down below. If you're curious as to how we get vehicles like these to keep for an extensive seven days so we can fully test them out, it's by you subscribing. So you subscribe and then that gives us opportunities like this to show you all better content. So please go ahead and do that. Also follow us on TikTok and Instagram. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.